What is going on my friends? Welcome back to the channel. Quick reminder before we jump into today's video. This Saturday, the 6th, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, the new Vossen Apparel drop goes live. Six or seven new shirts, jackets, windbreakers, all sorts of good stuff. Full breakdown coming soon. We painted the STI engine bay a few days back. And to get started on today's video, I wanna get some Raptor liner laid down inside the wheel wells. I didn't intentionally get any paint in there, but of course we got a little bit of overspray, which I think will be okay. I did go ahead and lay down some epoxy primer because you do need to spray epoxy before you spray Raptor liner. So that is what we're gonna get started off with today. Thankfully Raptor liner is super easy. It's not really all that messy, not a lot of overspray. We are gonna do a little bit of masking of course, but overall this should be a fairly simple task to get today started off. Let's get the S2K pulled out. I need to start driving this thing. I'm gonna throw new tires on it here soon and start whipping her around. Such a fun little car that just doesn't get driven. I think we can all agree that this being white behind the wheel is just kind of a funny look. I went ahead and put the fender on just to see what all would be exposed from this bend right here all the way to probably about right about here. That's all gonna go black with Raptor liner. Raptor liner is super, super strong, very durable. Pretty sure it's made for truck beds. That's what we use on the bottom side of the eight and it's been holding up well. Also, can we appreciate real quick the all white bay? with painted bolts, painted everything. It's gonna be so insane having this thing back on the road. I'm freaking excited. Let me get this fender pulled off, get some masking work done. Now, of course, we don't wanna mess up our fresh bay with Raptor liner overspray. So let's get this thing masked up and get some Raptor liner sprayed out. Front is all masked off and ready to go. I might do a little bit of light scuffing here and there just to make sure that Raptor liner adheres properly and doesn't start flaking off over time. While we are spraying, we might as well go ahead and do a little bit in the rear as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop off the wheel. Actually, hmm. I really don't feel like spraying epoxy primer. I'm gonna not do anything in the rear just because that epoxy primer would take forever to get set up. Then we'd have to mask off the whole entire car, set up the booth, all that because there's so much overspray. So let's just go ahead and knock out the fronts. So this here is the kit. Of course, we don't need a whole four bottles for what we're doing, but I feel like I use this quite a bit, so I just stocked up. These two together is about $170, $180. One whole kit did the entire underside of the eight, so you can do quite a bit. It's super simple to use. One bottle should be plenty. And then this is the hardener. You just take this little cup right here, fill it up to that fill line, dump it into the bottle, shake it up, mix it up, screw it onto the bottom of the gun, and then you can get to spraying.
first coat is sprayed down. They recommend two coats, so that is what I'm gonna do. One hour in between each coat. Sprayed down super easy, no overspray on anything else, thankfully. Not even on my fresh white shirt, surprisingly enough. But yeah, let's give her an hour, hose down another coat, and see how she looks. An hour later, we sprayed out the second coat, waited a bit, unmasked it, and a little bit disappointed because we didn't get a perfect mask up in here. Once this stuff dries, there's no there's no way you can get it off. Other than that though, it turned out really, really nice. Nice clean line here, fairly clean line up front. We still gotta pull off all the tape on the inside of the babe. Same thing on this side, nice clean up here, a little bit overspray right there, and then around that bar. Couldn't get it perfect. Of course, it's all hidden, so it doesn't really matter, but that, uh, that looks nice. This stuff holds up really, really well. Stuck to be done with that project. We only had four days after we sprayed that epoxy to get this Raptor liner sprayed out. So nice to be done with that. All right, let's move on to something else. We gotta let that dry for, I don't know how long, probably a couple hours at least. I don't think it says on the box anywhere, but let's move on to cleaning some stuff up. I wanna get the tranny and the, the subframe and whatnot back in the car as soon as possible, just so we can roll this thing around. But while we have it all out, it would be nice to get it all cleaned up. I think, I'm probably gonna pull some stuff apart, take the trans off, give it a good cleaning, clean up the subframe. We gotta pull off the wheels so we don't destroy our brand new wheels. Make sure we don't have any tears in the boots. Just really go through it all. Make sure it's nice and perfect. No worn out bushings, no nothing going on, and we can get this whole assembly back in the car. We gotta get the jack underneath it again so we can wheel it around, and then we can pull everything apart. I can't get that dang assembly back on the jack to wheel it around, and I just made a mess of, of gear oil. So I'm just gonna go ahead and disassemble it back here. Well, lesson learned. I should have drained that oil on the trans while I was in the car. Now I gotta figure out how to get it up in the air to drain the oil because half of it already leaked out. A couple jack stands, we should be good. It appears both axles are stuck in the hubs as well, so that's gonna be a little bit of work to get them out. Maybe a little bit of heat, WD-40, should be able to pop them out. These CVs are extremely, extremely stuck in here. I'm just gonna completely disassemble this whole, everything that you see right here, we can get it all cleaned up. I'm not gonna do any coating or powder coating, but it'll make it nice and clean and shiny.
So these guys are gonna have to soak for a while with some PB to get them to break free. We got everything else laid out outside. Here's how all the parts look. Quite crusty, greasy, dirty, disgusting. Let's give them a good degrease and pressure wash and see how they turn out. So we got everything cleaned up except for that one stuck axle. We got one axle out so far. Trans turned out really nice. Everything turned out fairly decent. It's all clean. It's not no Nemola spec. It's not blasted and cerakoted coated and powder coated, but this is gonna have to be good enough. Good enough. I'm gonna work on getting that axle out. If we can get it out, that would be nice. We don't need to, but it would be nice. We got everything cleaned up, got that CV axle out. We just let her soak with some PV blaster for a while and it seemed to do the trick. So this is every single part in piece I wanna get back on the car tonight. It's getting late, I'm gonna run grab some food real quick. Let the shop warm up, cause it's colder than freaking balls in here. This stuff is already like rock hard. It's probably not as hard as it's gonna get, but it's definitely hard enough to get this thing reassembled. It's so satisfying, pulling masking tape off. All right, I'm gonna run and grab food. And then we're gonna get this thing back together, minus the engine. First thing we're gonna get installed back into the car is the transmission. Let's go ahead and get this thing loaded up on the training jack, hoist her up, start off with throwing in those two main cross member bolts. Definitely not an FRS tranny, Lord almighty. This is awkward. <laughs> Yep. Trans is in, pitch stop is actually in the back of the car and I don't really wanna get it to be honest. So it'll be fine like that. Gonna go ahead, slop the steering rack back onto the subframe and then that assembly will go in and I'll probably throw the sway bar on as well. I'm not sure if it's like an Evo, I guess we can look real quick. Uh, sway bar will be easy to get on while it's in the car, so. Steering rack on subframe, subframe steering rack into the car.
From here on out, it's all simple light components. I'm gonna start off with the lower control arms, get those guys hanging where they need to be, slop on the hubs, slide in the CVs, coilovers, sway bar, that little guy right there, and then some sweet WRX brakes. Why do I feel like this is the wrong side? Probably because it is. The whole entire front subframe with transmission, driveline, all that stuff is back in the car and ready to go whenever we have a motor to install. I was about to move on to all the wiring inside the engine bay, fuse box. What else do we have? ABS, yeah, ABS pump, brake lines, but I really want to give it at least another 24 hour, 24 to 48 hours before we start messing around with the white paint on the car. I really don't want to start scratching that up and I know it's still pretty soft. I could probably do it and be extra, extra, extra careful, but I'd rather just wait and let it dry properly. So with that being said, gonna wrap up the video right here. I hope you guys enjoyed. This thing's already coming along. So exciting putting this thing back together. It feels weird putting it back together, honestly, with not perfectly refurbished, restored parts, but every car in the world can't be <laughs> fully restored. This is not the car for it. Peace out my friends, I'll see you guys tomorrow.